Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup Business Edition. These are recorded live Friday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Today, before we dive on into the news, I want to point out if you want to get yourself some Switch to Linux merch, we have a store at shop.switchtolinux.com, which is from Spreadshirt. And uh, you can actually come over here. This one is the Code of Conduct, RMRF, No Preserve Root. 2018 Code of Conduct, which is actually coming up pretty soon here, isn't it? Uh, we also have things like Switch to Linux, you fool. And we have cats and tin foil hats on select items. This, um, this image is not good enough for everything. We do have cats and tin foil hats, coffee cups. And we have a variety of other things, including our sub to the cat, the human is crazy. And we have anything from men's, women's, children's. We have coffee cups, water bottles, mouse pads. Of course, my mouse pad is very nice. Of course, my green screen messes with it, but you know, my uh, mouse pad is quite epic. So uh, we have a variety of different things over here. You can feel free to uh, swing by the store, shop.switchtolinux.com. That will take you right on over there to that. Pick up some merch and maybe we'll make something new here soon. I don't know. Let me know what you think. All right, so on to the business news. Amazon delivery contractors operate with little oversight. Report finds. Did we really need a report about this? Like, I got excessively irritated with Amazon's delivery guys. So this was interesting. So I ordered, when I rebuilt this computer, I ordered all these parts. It's like $600 in computer parts, right? So it's like, well, we can't ship that to the pickup location. Okay, we can't ship that to a post office box. You gotta ship that to a house. Okay, fine. We'll ship the computer parts to the house. Now I'd prefer it go to the pickup location or to the post office because those are actually very secure. So it ships and it's like, oh, it's gonna arrive on Sunday. Sunday, really? Well, it was one of these morons. And uh, so we're literally sitting there at home on Sunday. I was home all day. I was actually sitting on the couch, which I can reach behind me and touch the door from there. Guy came up delivered the package and never even knocked on the door. He just dropped $600 in computer parts on a front porch, which is so open. That place where I was living at that time was so wide open, literally low income neighborhood area. Um, not that I was low income, it's just where it was. We have a block here where there's some section eights, there's some tax credits, and then there's some, there's some townhouses and things like that, but very in that vicinity. And all, everybody has to walk right by where I was living. They don't even have the audacity to knock on the door. Just drop off and run. $600 in computer parts. That's how stupid these Amazon delivery morons are. So no offense if you're an Amazon delivery moron, but uh, you gotta have a little bit more insight over there at Amazon. But anyway, um, some reports were indicating at least, um, you know, basically what's happening is Amazon is convincing a lot of people to, you know, quit their jobs, buy trucks and become their own business so Amazon can contract them out. So they're not employees of Amazon, that's what they're trying to do. And then of course, if Amazon needs, you know, we got too many guys working, oh, just lay off a bunch of these guys easier to take care of. You don't have to worry about layoff slips and all the regulations dealing with that. But it turns out that these guys are so overworked. They obviously, they can't stop for restroom breaks. We saw the cases of the, the lady that, that popped a squat and, um, and uh, delivered a baby there on somebody's uh, front lawn. <laughs> it was a brown baby. <laughs> I was an Amazon delivery person. Um, and, uh, we had several other cases, like apparently these things are involved in traffic accidents all the time because they have to drive so erratically to make it from point to point to stay on the shift on time and not get docked that several of them have had car crashes and several people have even died in response to this kind of stuff. So apparently, uh, these Amazon, uh, Amazon companies, man, they're just scrimping every penny that they can. Full disclosure, shop at Amazon. Use my Amazon affiliate link up there. That'll be a great way to help support the channel. Um, keep these guys in business, man. <laughs> of course, I like it when they ship to the pickup locations. Or you know, my post office box, please. That's why I have it. All right. Um, so we talked not last week or a couple weeks ago. I think it was a couple weeks ago about AT&T changed around all their plans and they made it so confusing that even they got their their plans all mixed up. 
So AT and T. Okay, well, I got to read this article because it's so hard to read. This is a this is an exercise in vo in um, vocal stamina. All right. AT and T is confusing AT and T TV with AT and T TV now, creating mass confusion. Look at, just look at this article. Look at how many AT&T's. at and t recently launched a new TV streaming service called at and TV. In short, at and TV is direct TV streaming online. I feel like I should be reading Dr. Seuss and the cat in the hat. <laughs> the pricing is the same. They have many of the same fees. at and t also decided to rebrand direct TV now to at and TV now. Both services use the same app called at and TV. Here comes the major, pro uh, the major problem confusing anyone trying to understand AT&T TV versus AT&T TV now. AT&T has already recently started to promote DirecTV Now's rebranding as being changed to AT&T TV, not AT&T TV Now. In a large app store banners and even the description, AT&T proudly boasts about how DirecTV Now is now AT&T TV. The problem is that is not the case. DirecTV Now is now AT&T TV Now. AT&T TV is a brand new service with a different pricing terms and conditions as the new AT&T TV Now. Whew. Wow. All right. <laughs> Here are some screenshots, which AT&T clearly says DirecTV Now is AT&T TV. AT, uh, DirecTV Now is what you're getting. Say hello to AT&T TV, which is not the case. DirecTV Now is now AT&T TV Now. <laughs> Whoops. What's new? DirecTV Now has a new name. Say hello to AT&T TV, which again is not correct. <laughs> They reached out to cord cutters, letting us know they're updating the app description to help remove the confusion. <laughs> you think? This article should really be in Sillyville, shouldn't it? We should have taken this article down to Sillyville, which, by the way, I do have two Sillyville articles today, guys. So stay tuned for Sillyville. All right. This one should be in Sillyville, though. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Really? We're going to close that out. All right. Facebook, oh boy, once again, after breaching all of your information, Facebook is now launching its dating application. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you want to use Facebook's dating application. Uh, yeah, Facebook dating. This is, this is exciting. Um, so they, they've tested it in Colombia. I'm not sure why they chose Colombia. Uh, like Columbia, like they don't have enough food to feed the people in Columbia. Do they really need, I don't know. I've never been there. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, Facebook dating is now available in the United States. Users 18 and older can use it. Will appear as the new tab within the Facebook mobile app. People who opt into dating can create a profile that's separate from their main profile page and meet potential romantic partners among their friends of friends. Or if that makes you uncomfortable, completely outside of your existing friend network. Facebook says it will suggest matches for you based on preferences you express when you create your profile, along with the interests and Facebook activity. The app, which borrows many design elements from dating app Hinge, allows you to send a like and corresponding message to any profile you encounter in the service. You won't see your Facebook friends in the app unless you use its secret crush feature. What are we, are we, are we back in middle school? The secret crush feature. <gasps> we are like, we are becoming this infantile society of rejuveniles. Guys, if you've not read the book Rejuvenile by Christopher Knoxon, go read the book Rejuvenile. It's pretty old at this point. I remember getting it when it first came out about a decade ago. Fabulous read about this, this trend of becoming infantile in our behaviors in life. The secret crush feature. Should I do the rest of this article like a middle school girl now? Does it, it lets you express interest in up to nine Facebook friends or Instagram followers. If you both like each other, you'll get a notification letting you know. Probably one of the best notifications of their life. <gasps> oh, just until you fall in love with someone else. Anyway, um, would you guys use Facebook um, dating profiles? Let me know what you guys think. All right, um, Tesla. Uh, Tesla's autopilot 
lulled drivers into a state of inattention, according to the NTSB. So uh, NTSB basically criticized Tesla saying, you know, the way that you're doing this will lead to accidents because you're bringing people's attention off of the road. And that's kind of what happens. You don't have to watch the road anymore. You feel like you don't have to. And so you watch this way, you watch that way. And before you know it, your Tesla is accelerating into the back of a fire truck or a median divider because those are the two things Tesla not only likes to run into, but those are the two things that Tesla really, really likes to accelerate into. Wow. Wow. All right. Um, so the driver of, Mo of a Tesla Model T who crashed into a fire truck in California freeway last year was not paying attention to the road thanks to the over-reliance on autopilot. The National Transportation Safety Board said on Wednesday... In addition, investigators determined another probable cause for the crash was the design of autopilot, which permitted the driver to disengage from driving tasks. Yes, anytime that type of stuff is going to happen, it is going to cause you to disengage. So as we are paying less attention to the road because we are instead paying attention to anything but the road because, hey, we're relying on autopilot. NTSB told Tesla a long time ago this is going to lead to an increase in accidents, which it has. And Tesla apparently doesn't really care. Um, in fact, I mean, if they want to do one thing, hey, why don't we change the name? Autopilot is something that actually flies planes. It is not something that actually drives cars. Okay, just an FYI. And on to our feature story. For all you people who need some medical procedures done, maybe you need a CAT scan, maybe, I don't know, something going on in your life. Why pay the high, 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 high medical processes when you could go to Group Groupon and grab yourself a medical deal? That's right, Groupons for medical treatment. Welcome to today's U.S. healthcare. And this is, what this highlights is the big fundamental problem of healthcare in America is that it's so jacked up artificially. Artificially. Guys, it's not the research for all these pharmaceuticals that drives the medical costs high. No, those are paid for by the pharmaceutical companies having patents to keep other people from making generic versions of their drugs and allowing them to charge more for new research breakthroughs in the pharmaceutical industry. That's not the case. The case is, is that there are unfortunately groups of people in our society who have decided that profiteering off of fear mongering with injured and hurting and suffering people is a good way to make a buck because would you like to die or would you like to pay us thousands of dollars? But that's just a band-aid. I can buy one at the CVS for 50 cents. Well, would you like to die or would you like to accept our $1,000 Band-Aid? Okay, when our medical system, like CEOs in our medical system, we just need, I don't know. I'm not going to complete that sentence. All right. Emerald University medical fellow Dr. Nicole Herberts was shocked when she saw three patients who came in with abnormal results from a chest CT scans they had bought on Groupon. Yes, Groupon. The online coupon mecca also sells discounted fitness classes and footsie, uh, foosballs tables. So she says in a tweet, saw three patients in clinic for abnormal chest CTs bought on Groupon. Evolution of my thoughts. What the bleep? Google it. Huh. Actually priced pretty reasonably. Jeez, if I ever need testing, I'm going with Groupon. Probably cheaper than insurance. U.S. healthcare is bonkers. I agree. I concur. Similar deals have shown up for various lung, heart, and full body scans across Atlanta, as well as Oklahoma and California. Groupon also offers discount coupons for expectant parents looking for ultrasounds sold as fetal memories. Well, at least it's not fecal memories. Anyway, um, I had the experience of that one time, by the way. One thing that made me unfriend somebody in Facebook in a hot second, they posted on Facebook they were so excited that their child finally used the potty for the first time. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to put it on Facebook. Ah! All right. So, uh, Hertz declined to comment for the story. Her sentimentals were shared widely with the medical community on social media. The concept of patients using Groupons to get discounted medical care elicited the typical stages of Twitter grief. Anger, bargaining, and acceptance. 
And that is the medical system in the United States today. But ultimately use of Groupon and other pricing tools is a symptomatic of a healthcare market where patients desperately want a deal or at least tools that better nail down their costs before they get care. Whether or not a person may philosophically agree that medicine is a business and it is a market, said Stephen Howard, who runs St. Louis University's health administration system. And that is the problem. Healthcare should not be a business. Healthcare should not be a profiteering enterprise. Okay, now, do we need to pay our doctors a good amount of money? I agree with that. But the fact of the matter is, I have family who work in healthcare. And I will tell you, hands down, it is not the doctors that are profiteering from all of this. It is the CEOs at the hospitals. It is the private companies holding the hospitals in our countries. It is the nonprofit boards who are using it for backdoor deals. Doctors are leaving hospitals in large amounts because they're being underpaid. That is a serious problem. This is not an issue of the doctor needs paid a good wage. Doctors do need paid a good wage. But a hospital should not be jacking up the price of a Band-Aid a thousand percent especially when it comes down to an injured person. Have a little bit of morality and ethics in what you're doing. All right, so uh, CEO of MD Save, a site that contracts with providers to offer discount price vouchers and bundled medical treatments and services. See, it's like, he, how do we fix this? Well, here's your cost. Let's cap the hospital at making about maybe five or 10% profit. Yeah, maybe 20% profit, why not? 20% is certainly better than 1,000. The doctor needs a good living wage. Awesome. No problem. The hospital needs to make some profit. I don't have a problem. But when the hospital is profiteering off of thousands of percentages for a procedure, like, guys, a scan is, does not cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay? A scan is not a ton different than going to a photocopier and pushing the button. It takes a little bit more time. you got to pay the wage of of a technician, you gotta pay the wage of a doctor. That's not hundreds of thousands of dollars. So this coupon was like 95% off, and by the way, they're not giving out the coupons to give the service up for free. They were giving up some of that profit. So what do you guys think about all this kind of stuff? Let me know your thoughts about this nonsense in the comments down below.